Greetings from the great state of Alaska. My name is Dr. G, and today I want to share with you a message of hope. We're going to be looking at Psalm chapter 80 today. This psalm, it could easily be a continuation of Psalm chapter 79. And if you recall, Psalm chapter 79, it talked about destruction, specifically the destruction of Jerusalem, the destruction of the temple, the, the exile of the Jewish nation into Babylon. Psalm chapter 80, it talks about restoration. And so what I want to do today, I want to read the last verse of Psalm chapter 79, and then we're going to look at the first couple of verses of Psalm chapter 80. I want to show you the connection, okay? So if you have your Bibles, if you would like to turn to Psalm chapter 79 and Psalm chapter 80. Psalm chapter 79, verse 13. It says, Then we, your people, the sheep of your pasture, will praise you forever from generation to generation, we will recount your praise. Let me read it one more time. Then we, your people, the sheep of your pasture, will praise you forever. Now Psalm chapter 80, it begins with the following verse. Hear us, O shepherd of Israel, you who lead Joseph like a flock, you who sit enthroned between the cherubim, shine forth before Ephraim, Benjamin, and Manasseh. Awaken your might. Come and save us. And so the connection is clear as Asaph, he's the psalmist in both of these chapters, Asaph identifies Israel as the sheep of God's pasture in Psalm chapter 79. <clears throat> but then Asaph identifies God as Israel's shepherd in Psalm chapter 80. What I want to do, I want to take a quick look at the amazing relationship that exists between a shepherd and his sheep. And we're going to do this. We're going to do this by looking at Psalm chapter 23 briefly. And so let's go ahead. Let's turn to Psalm chapter 23. I don't want to take it too much time, but I do want to highlight this relationship because it's a powerful relationship. Hallelujah. Starting at verse 1. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not be in want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He restores my soul. He guides me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. You know, the benefits of being in right relationship with the shepherd is immense. One of those benefits, and I just read it, one of those benefits is restoration. Psalm chapter 23, verse 3, it says, He restores my soul. He restores my soul. And then if we go to Psalm chapter 80, and we look at verse 3, it says, Restore us, O oh God. Make your face shine upon us that we may be saved. I'm going to read it one more time. Restore us, O oh God. 
make your face shine upon us that we may be saved. You know, when you go through a crisis situation, a destructive season where everything has fallen apart, it's time to throw yourself into the merciful embrace of the Good Shepherd. Amen. It's time to throw yourself into the lap of Almighty God. When you've been through a destructive season, and that's what happened to Israel. They had been through this destructive season where everything that mattered to them was destroyed by the enemy. We see a crisis situation happening even right now in Israel and the entire Middle East. We see a crisis situation in the Midwest, well, I guess specifically, if we look at Tennessee and Georgia and Florida, some of those states that were just uh, ravaged and destroyed by Hurricane Helene, I believe is the name. And so when you've been through a destructive season, when you've been through a crisis, you need restoration. And that begins with God. You see, God's presence changes everything. And that's why you throw yourself into his lap. That's why you throw yourself into his arms, because his presence changes everything. And you see, the restoration process, it begins with God's presence. If you want to re be restored, find God's presence. Get as close as you can to God. Amen. Get as close as you can. Draw close to him. Recognize yourself as his sheep. And crawl up into the lap of your shepherd. Let his face shine upon you. Amen. Let his face shine upon you. Let's look at verses 4 through 6. Now, verses 4 through 6, they show us what life looks like when we displease God. And when we live without his favor. When we live outside of his blessing. And maybe I should say when we fail to seek God's face and the favor that comes from his face shining upon us. It's hard to live like that. Let's read verses 4 through 6. O Lord God Almighty, how long will your anger smolder against the prayers of your people? You have fed them with the bread of tears. You have made them drink tears by the bowlful. You have made us a source of contention to our neighbors and our enemies. Mock us. You see, when God's favor is lacking, the enemy will mock you. When God's favor is lacking, your neighbors will contend with you. There will be no peace. You see, when God's favor is lacking, your days, your hours, will be filled with tears and characterized by sorrow. It's a miserable way to live outside of God's favor. Now, verse 7 is an echo of verse 3. We see this repeated three times in this chapter. Verse 3 says, I'm sorry, verse 7 says, Restore us, O God Almighty. Make your face shine upon us that we may be saved. You see, God's face shining on you is nothing short of God's favor on your life. The psalmist, he is referring, whenever he says the face of God shining, he's referring to the priestly blessing. And we see the priestly blessing in, in uh, Numbers chapter 6, verses 24 through 26. And let's look at the priestly blessing for just a moment. Let's look at that. Hallelujah. It says, The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. Now this is a powerful pronouncement of blessing that comes from living in the favor of the Lord. When we are in right relationship with God, when our sins are forgiven, and Jesus is the Lord of our lives, we can be sure that our high priest, 
Jesus Christ is praying this very prayer over us. We're going to stop here today. This chapter is about 19 verses long, but we're going to stop. We're going to look at verses 8 through 19 next week. I want to close with two verses from the book of John. John chapter 14, verse 6, and John chapter 10, verse 10. In John chapter 14, verse 6, Jesus, he says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Let that sink in for just a moment. Jesus is the way. Jesus is the truth. Jesus is the life. No one comes to the Father except they come through Jesus. You have to come through your high priest. Jesus is our high priest. Amen. John chapter 10, verse 10. Jesus said, The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. But I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. You know, from these two verses, it's clear that Jesus is the path to restoration. Whatever the crisis, whatever season of destruction you're facing, Jesus is the path to restoration. Amen. Jesus, once again, Jesus is the aim of God's shining face. Remember when God the Father looked down upon Jesus, he said, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. And God's face shined upon Jesus because he was pleased with Jesus. And Jesus found favor from his Father. When you're living for Jesus, when Jesus is the Lord of your life and the Holy Spirit has made you his temple, God's face shines on you. Amen. God's favor will be evident upon your life. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you today for this, this word in the book of Psalms. We thank you for uh, this scripture that points us in the right direction. Lord, that restoration begins in your presence. Restoration begins when we draw close to you, O oh God, and then your face shines upon us. Lord, I pray for restoration over your, your chosen people, Israel. Lord, as they face continued uh destruction in their country lord they they're they're battling the enemy today hamas and hezbollah and the houthis lord they're they're in constant tension in the middle east and i pray for your favor to be upon israel in a great way i pray that you would set up a table before them in the presence of their enemies and that you would come to their defense lord i pray for those who are suffering in in the eastern southeastern part of the United States and Georgia and, and Tennessee and, and, and uh, Florida and these states that were affected by Hurricane Helene. I just pray, God, that you would bring personal restoration to those who have survived the hurricane. Lord, I pray that you would bring a peace into their lives and, and God, that you would enable them to rebuild and to be restored. And Lord, I know that ultimately our restoration has a lot to do with the choices we make. And Lord, as a nation, I pray that America would begin to make good choices. Lord, especially as we see an election coming up here in November, I pray that you would lead us and guide us. Lord, because we are your sheep and you are our shepherd. And Lord, we want to make good decisions in these upcoming elections. Lord, we want your face to shine upon us. We don't want to be separated from your presence and be separated from you. Lord, today I give you all the praise, Lord Jesus. I give you all the glory. Amen. God bless you.